we know that this side is going to be 4 because this is x, so that has to be x plus 4. And if this is 5 and this is x plus 2, we know that it needs to be x minus 3 because x minus 3 plus 5 will give you x minus x plus 2. So we know the perimeter is starting from the top 4 plus 5 plus x plus x minus 3 plus x plus 4 plus x plus 2. Combine all our like terms, you've got 1, 2x's, 3, 4x's. You've got 9 minus 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10, plus 2 is 12. So that's our perimeter. Sir? Yeah? Wouldn't you um, calculate the area of 80 centimetres and then that's how you get the x's? Yes, but we also need to find out what the perimeter is. So at the end, I'm just going to come back to what the perimeter is. I've got my equation and we can put that in. So the thing is, we want to find out what x is, right? So kind of if you went to the perimeter, you would add it all up. But then you go, well, what's x? Well, I don't know. Ah, but you're given this bit of information, you know, the area is. So if I make an area formula, I can let that equal 80, and then I can solve for what x is. Because at the moment, we've got two unknowns. I've got the perimeter, and I've got x. If I have one unknown, I can solve it. And that's the trick here. So I know what the area is. So the area would equal 80. So what we're going to do is I know that, so let's look at area. So area is the inside of the shape, right? Is the area of the inside of the shape. But I know that needs to be 80. So 80 will equal what by what by what? Now, there's a couple of ways we could do this. Which way do we want to split this? Do we want to go 4 by x plus 2? X, x minus 3, we could do that. Or you could split it here. You know what I mean? You can make it 4 by 5 by x plus 4 by x minus 3. What do you guys want to do? Either way, it's not going to matter. I'm probably just going to cut it off by here. I reckon that, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to do this, which is 4 by 5. We'll do it both ways. You'll just see. Plus, this is going to be x plus 4 multiplied because remember, it's length by width, so it's the whole length multiplied by that, by x minus 3. Now we can do 80 equals 20, plus we've got to now multiply this. That's going to give me x squared, so we've done our expansions. That's going to give me um, x squared minus 3x plus 4x minus 12. So now if we make this all equal 0 on one side, we'll come to an answer for this. So 80 equals 20 plus, no, whoops, I don't want to do that. 20 minus 12 is going to be 8. Well, let's just do my x squared. x squared is what I'm going to do first, sorry. Minus 3x plus 4x is going to be plus x. 20 minus 12 is going to be plus 8. 0. Now, why am I making it equal 0? Because we can use the null factor law. I'm going to minus 80 from both sides. Now, we got to that equation. If we did it this way, just say we broke it down there, you get the same thing. So this is 4 by x plus 2. So the area is 80. So 80 equals 4 by x plus 2 by x by x minus 3 plus x x minus 3. Expand this. That equals 4x plus 8 plus x squared minus 3x, and that equals 80. Click my like terms, x squared plus x plus 8, same point, minus 80 from both sides. I just wanted to do that just to show you it equates to the same thing. It doesn't matter which way you break it up because it's area and it should be the same. Let's move on. So now I want to factorize this. If I, because at the moment I could guess and check. Like if I put in one, one squared plus one, 
Well, it doesn't work. If I put in two, it doesn't work. Put in three, it doesn't work. You know, I could keep on going. Um, so, you know, if you got minus 72, you could do that. But if we factorize this, uh, can I take out any common factors? No, I can't. So I'm just going to now try and factorize it. So it's a negative. So again, when it's negative, we know that one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative. And we know we've got a difference because it's a different, because it's a, um, you know, it's going to be, because they're going to be different symbols. We know it's going to be a difference of one. So two numbers that give us multiple, multiplication of 72 with a difference of one, that would be seven times eight. So with the eight being, uh, sorry, seven times nine, uh, eight times nine, Ugh. eight times nine will give us 72 with X, because with, it's a positive, with positive being nine. So that's going to give us negative 72. It's going to give us positive yeah, 9x. You, you said 7 times 8 instead of 9 times 8. I meant 9 times 8, yeah. 9 times 8, sorry. I was getting a bit carried. It's because I had the 70. I don't know, I had it in my head. 9 times 8 would give us 72, right? Okay, 1 needs to be negative, 1 needs to be positive because you've got to get a negative here. So 1 needs to be positive, 1 needs to be negative. And we're looking for a difference of 1 between the two numbers. Or if you add them together, it's going to give you positive 1x. 9x minus 8x will give you 1x. So that's how we factorized it. Now we can use what we call the null factor law. You can only use the null factor law when the equation equals nothing. That's why we make it equal 0, because I'm trying to get this now to equal 0. Well, x can equal negative 9, because if x equals negative 9, So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get x plus 9 to equal 0. I'm trying to get this factor to equal nothing. Therefore, x needs to equal negative 9. If you substitute in x equals negative 9, you're going to get... Oops, what am I doing in there? Minus 9 plus 9. Hey, that gives you 0, doesn't it? 0 times anything... Negative 9 minus 8, that's going to be uh, negative 17. Well, 0 times anything, in this case negative 17, is going to equal 0, which is correct. Alternatively, we could also substitute in x equals negative 8, uh, x equals 8, because of this factor. Oh. 0. 8 plus 9 multiply by 8 minus 8. 0 equals, that's going to be 17, times 0. Well, that equals 0. So we have two solutions, x equals negative 9 and x equals 8. We've got to go back to the thing. Can it be negative 9? I mean, if this is negative 9, negative 9 plus 2 would be negative 7. I mean, how does that even make sense? So again... What we need to do is we need to prove, so we need to state, after all this working, we need to actually state that x needs to be greater than 0 for the shape to exist. Actually, that's incorrect. x needs to be greater than 3, because if x was 0 here, this length would be 3, negative 3, right? If x was 0 here, that would be 2. If x was 0 here, it would be 4. If x was 0 here, well, that wouldn't even be there, but you could still, I suppose, have the shape, so it needs to be greater than 0. But if x was 0 here, it would be negative 3. So x actually needs to be greater than 3 in this case, because otherwise this wall would be negative. So in this case, it is slightly different. x needs to be greater than 3 for the shape to exist. Therefore, x must equal 8. Not negative 9, you've got two solutions, but it has to be 8. Because if you put negative 9 into this, it will work. Negative 9 squared is 81. 81 minus 9 is 72. 72 minus 72 is 0. So it's true, but in terms of the application, it's not correct. So going back up to the original thing where we know that the perimeter, therefore we know x equals 8. We can now substitute it in because we've already done the thinking of what the perimeter is. That's four lots of 8 plus 12, 4 lots of 8 is 32, plus 12, that equals 44 centimetres. Don't forget about your units. Yay!
Well done.